What up, y'all, and welcome to the show. Now you'll see how rehearsed some of the stuff I do is. Not. Actually, usually it's not. But, <laughs> but because my brain had enough of a... Uh, had enough of a memory left in it in order to remember something that I said just a couple of minutes ago. I was able to do that. See, because your brain had enough of a memory left in it. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> the thing is that the thing is that when um, some some streamers who are more eloquent than me might have more eloquence left in their bodies in order to exude it. But I've made a lot of videos. <laughs> That was awesome. So sometimes they are not as successful as they are other times, upon which time they are successful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to the show. We've got a bunch of great topics for you today. Google has approved a Cyanogen Mod phone, so apparently those guys are no longer, you know, jilted lovers and are now talking to each other. I don't know that they were ever, you know, lovers, but they... I mean, they worked together, if you get it, you know, working together, but... Uh, BitTorrent Sync... Looks like oh. it could be the final solution to personal cloud. So I, I mean, if it exterminates every other personal cloud solution out there, I will be extremely pleased by that because it looks amazing. Secure, private, no limits. Have they talked about cost? Is there going to be a cost associated with the program? None. They're saying it's free or the beta's free? It's saying it's, it's, it's BitTorrent, it's free. All right, because that is extremely exciting. We're gonna have Jason from Jay's Two Cents joining us shortly. There's our little guest lower third. That's a preview of that. Don't look too closely at it. <laughs> Someone's gonna scrub back and stare at it for no reason. No reason. Just because you said Just because I told them Someone not to. Someone will go do it. All right, go ahead. What else? You, you introduced some topics for a change. There's been a lot of Layout. really, really big... <laughs> acquisitions this year and one of them is going to be a Vago acquiring LSI so that's actually a pretty big deal some people are like oh Vago just makes the switches in my mouse not no. switches sensors but sensors yeah mouse sensors no not so much other things too a lot bigger of a deal um and then T-Mobile is kind of leaking possibly information about Uncarrier 4 which looks really interesting and ties into their other Uncarrier schemes as well I just spilled water on my laptop good thing I hate this laptop <sighs> But unfortunately, I need to use it for the next little while here. So we're just going to blow out the water and hope that that works. All right, guys, without further ado, here is the intro. So guys, our sponsor today is Squarespace. Head over to squarespace.com and use offer code Linus12 in order to get 10% off your first paid subscription to Squarespace. So Squarespace is the easy way to create a beautiful functional website for your blog, business, store, or whatever else you happen to need one for. Um, someone was saying the intro works. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm wondering if we might know, be right? too high bitrate for a lot of people. We're too high bitrate? Some people are, have like 30 megabits per second down and they're on low and it's buffering like crazy. Well, that shouldn't be because we're a partner, so it should scale in theory. Yeah, but I'm wondering what it scales to. Like, I wonder if there's different scale levels for low depending on what your top end is. I have no idea what you're talking about. People are saying it's Twitch, apparently. That's very possible. That's very possible, too. <laughs> All right. Anyway, guys, let's jump right into our first topic here, which is going to be actually a Twitch-related topic. So check this out. We're going to head over to GeForceLe.com, where the GeForce Le Experience has been updated. So GeForce Experience 1.8 introduced Shadow Play, which is a way of using the H.264 encoding hardware built onto your Kepler-based GeForce GPU, so that is 650 Ti Boost and up, in order to record your gameplay videos with a very, very negligible performance hit. Now GeForce Experience 1.8.1 introduces Shadow Play Twitch streaming. So there's like a video of a guy oh it's warframe okay cool okay we're gonna stop that now because we don't want our video to get taken down quick move it ah 
Anyway. <laughs> okay, for those of you who haven't been following, there's like a big, there's a big hubbub on the YouTube right now for people who are uh, uploading gameplay footage and getting takedown notices that are taking down their videos. It's sort of a big deal right now, so. My favorite thing has been when people are like, I'm just going to show a little bit, so it probably won't get taken down. And then it's like, well... <laughs> Come if on. you know what you're doing is going to get the video <laughs> taken down then I don't want to hear any complaints but if you really were a victim here then that's a whole other thing so anyway GeForce Experience 1.8.1 now allows you to live stream so let's face it it doesn't have quite the same degree of flexibility that something like um, XSplit does where you can have all these different inputs and there's like HDMI in here and webcam in there and you know your gameplay window there and so there's there's a few things that aren't really perfect about it so it's it's still very much in beta alt tabbing interrupts your stream for example there's very limited functionality compared to dedicated broadcast software like XSplit still no Linux support but if the objective is to play DirectX games and stream them on Twitch and do a little commentary, it's, it's so funny because uh, I mean I love Nvidia, I heart them, they're my friends, but there's there's some pretty um, there's some pretty sort of lame terminology in here. Enable you to uh, blah blah blah. We're updating something something. I think they said something like do your. Um, commentaries or something like that. No, actually, oh, I must have read it wrong. Okay, well, they did fine. It was me who misinterpreted it. Yeah. I was like, I don't remember anything being weird in there. I'm going to try it in the after party, but it's going to crash when I hold tab. So I'll try it like once and then... We'll just see if it works and then go from there. Yeah. Cool. That's about it. I think that's pretty exciting. It's interesting because it's, it's going to open the door to a lot more people. Because I know one of the big problems when my brother first started trying to do StarCraft casting was he tried to do it off of like a laptop while he was at an event and it was like hmm. oh there's quite a few people commenting that uh right if you're used to watching our stream on high you may want to turn it down because high will be a higher bitrate than usual we're on our fiber connection now yes we are mm. i'm just wondering if it might be oh. worse because people that want to watch on high are jumping up a resolution as well so now that people used to watch on high they might have to go to a lower resolution because of our bitrate but high resolution at a low bitrate looks like ass anyway. So yeah. they're probably better off watching at 720p. I don't know. I'm interested. I'm interested too. Well, at any rate, we're ready to move into our next topic, which is Avago to acquire LSI. Now, I have to confess that I am one of the people who, I, like, I generally consider myself to be sort of in the know when it's like, oh, Linus, what does Toshiba know about SSDs? And I'm like, a whole lot, believe it or not, because they manufacture NAND flash. Well, I had no idea that Avago was this big. Uh, so within the, within the last year, there's actually been quite a few things that have happened. Uh, one of the, one of the things that happened not that long ago was actually LSI acquiring Sandforce. So that was at the time the dominant SSD um, controller. Well, I can't huh, you can't call them maker because they don't they didn't actually fab anything, but but they own the IP and designer. they designed yeah the designer the control the controller designer for most of the high end SSDs on the market. LSI acquired them, and over the last year or so, we've seen the branding gradually shift from Sandforce to LSI Sandforce to more and more towards LSI. Well, now they have been acquired. So Avago makes all kinds of crazy stuff. So the original article is from Anontech, and they're talking about how they you know. Apple devices use an LTE duplexer module and power amplifier from Avago. These chips don't generally get much attention. Uh, they're mainly focused on the enterprise side and things like fiber channel transceivers and fiber optics and all kinds of which I guess ties well into the thing that they're probably best known to gamers for, which is the optical and laser sensors in gaming mice. But I had no idea that they were a big enough deal to acquire LSI. It's crazy how they just like dropped it in cash. They're like, yep, we're just going to buy you. Not go into debt or anything, just boop. It's kind of impressive when companies are able to do that. Yeah. And they're just that much bigger that they're just like, nope. So mine. it looks for the moment like it's going to be a non-destructive takeover. So the LSI team that, uh, remember, these guys have a ton of experience with high-end storage. So this is going to tie in potentially really, really nicely with someone who specializes in high-end interconnects. So so things like fiber channel. So we could be looking at, um, at, at, at merging these technologies in ways that are going to make high speed storage um, just 
a, a gen th th this could be the next generation of high-speed storage, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Removing if, bottlenecks, man. Yeah, exactly. Removing bottlenecks is a huge thing, and having these guys working together, if the merger goes well, although, yeah. you know, I mean, you look at how long it took someone like AMD and ATI to figure out their very different corporate cultures and find a way to get a cohesive product that really contains elements from both teams to market. That being said, with a lot of communication technologies and stuff that we have now, it seems to be a lot easier for these companies to do this. And we've seen, like, a long time ago, it was a lot more common for destructive takeovers. Right. Because of that problem, communications problems, yeah. all that kind of stuff. It's like, well, your HQ's here, your HQ's there, you want your job, okay, I guess you better relocate. Yeah. I don't really care, yeah. so don't or do, whatever. And so, that seems a lot less common now. Communication is a lot easier, and there's a lot of more widespread companies and mergers that are being done much less destructively. Speaking of communications, apparently <clears throat> Obama... I guess the meeting's already taken place, actually. Have you checked out any follow-up on the meeting? Cause... I have not. All right, so Obama did have his meeting. With I, I heard kind of nothing came out of it, so I'm not sure. You can you can check it out. but I don't um, think so. Original... I think if anything does, it'll be not for a while. Original article was from The Verge, and it's Obama to meet with the leaders from Apple, Twitter, and Yahoo today. In fact, there are quite a few executives that Obama has committed to meet with, so including Apple CEO, Twitter CEO, uh, Netflix's co-founder and CEO, Dropbox, Yahoo, Salesforce, Zynga, Sherpa, Comcast, LinkedIn, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, AT&T. These are all huge companies, and the, the Obama administration, actually Obama himself, has committed to meet with these guys to discuss um, some of the stuff that's been going on lately with the NSA and some of the, well, just outright data theft from these companies that's been going on over the last little... I mean, I can't, I can't imagine what he would have to say. It says specifically what hasn't been made public yet is exactly how President Obama responded to surveillance concerns. So everything that people cared about hasn't been revealed yet. So yeah, we don't really know yet. But I... Yeah, that's kind of brutal. And I'm I'm actually, I had this in the notes, but I'm happy that it happened now. Because if it happened a few months ago, I think almost none of these companies would have really gone up to bat too hard. But once they figured out that they were all being infiltrated, they all got kind of really pissed off. Yeah, you know, it's surprising how many people thought that that open letter uh, was fake. Um, Microsoft, can't, can't remember where the actual thing is. Uh, Google, everyone agrees. Just trying to, I'm trying to find that open letter that they all wrote. My colleague, whatever. The... That was in the paper. I think I sent you that, right? Yeah, here it is. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, here it is. So uh, this is from uh, phonearena.com. Anyway, uh, dear Mr. President and members of Congress, etc., 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 we understand you have a duty to protect citizens. Sincerely, AOL, Apple, Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Microsoft, Twitter, Yahoo. And uh, when I tweeted that out, it was amazing how many people thought it was fake. Because it was just this letter that's like, hey, can you please like cut the crap and stop doing this? Sincerely, all of us, a bunch of companies <laughs> that aren't exactly known for working together, uh, Twitter and Facebook, anyone? Uh, you know, Apple, Microsoft, Yahoo for that matter, Google and Apple, like there's, there's a whole lot of, this is the one thing that they seem to all be it's able to agree on. It's interesting when that happens, when there's a whole big group of people that fight all the time, and then there's this giant bad guy that shows up, and they're like, oh, okay, <laughs> let's all group together and fight that thing. That's when you see the interesting alliances. So, yeah, I, I, to me, it's absolutely baffling that they didn't notice on their own before all of this went public, but I guess... A lot of it's, when you're, when you're looking at internal pipe traffic, though, like, how much are you really analyzing that? compared to external stuff like you you see so many different things accessing this data you, you're probably not too worried because it's all internal stuff and you're all encrypted from the outside and you're watching the outside so it kind of makes sense that they might not have noticed it for a long time i don't know yeah. all right now this is a pretty exciting little topic for the pc gamers out there hopefully there's at least a few of those watching our stream you know I what know. i should just make sure that our youtube announcement went up because we've been having some problems with that lately with that just not going out to the viewers yes it has but it has like very few thumbs up and like it looks like it might not be fully published yet so that's that's brilliant maybe we'll do a twitter blitz after this one but the dual shock 4 is 
Fully unlocked for PC almost. This was posted by Tiger Claws 12894 on the forum. And it's from the PCSX2 forum right here where there is a little bit, little bit of a breakdown from the guy who is working on it. So, go, uh, go ahead, I think you have all the details for this one. So basically, it, it was working except for the touchpad, the LED, and uh, vibrate mode. And PS PlayStation was essentially, or Sony, I guess, sorry. It was essentially like, yeah, it works except for these things, sorry. Someone in the community decided that wasn't good enough and started releasing their own hacked, weird version things that incorporates a few different things, like tricks it into thinking it's a different controller. It emulates it into a 360 controller and like all this weird stuff, which is really cool. Emulating into a 360 controller so that it thinks certain things should work and then they just work. That's brilliant. Um, and yeah, so the community is stepping up and making this thing work, and it's hilarious because Xbox is, doesn't. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's so, so you, you're going to need a dongle for an Xbox One controller, which is just unbelievable it's to pathetic. me. I mean, uh, you look at the versatility of Sony's implementation with Bluetooth, and you can, I mean, I, I, I mean it could be better. You know, you look at the PS3 controller, the fact that you had to have a rooted Android device in order to use that controller on Android. But, like, why? Why didn't you just... I mean, okay. At least it's better than Microsoft, where you still need a dongle. They had every opportunity over the last eight years to see that Sony's solution was better this time. Just use Bluetooth. Use Bluetooth so that at least let us try to hack it. <laughs> Please. Because exactly. like, I don't think anyone's mad about this. Sony giving up and just being like, yeah, it works that much. I don't think anyone actually cared. No. Because Sony's not stopping these guys, which yes. is the nice part. Which is the good part. The part that's like thumbs up Sony. I mean, they could have done better. There's no real reason oh, yeah. why they couldn't have just had a PC driver so you sit down and you can game at your computer. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, they're, okay. It okay. should have just worked. It should have just worked. But I don't think worked. people are too up in arms that it didn't because they're allowing people to mess with it. And my issue here is that how long ago was this? <laughs> okay? How long ago... Like two or three weeks, I think. ...was this? So this is, uh, this is the old article from uh, GameSpot. Okay, or this is a post on GameSpot, and this... I hate this computer. Okay, so then <laughs> it's redirecting me to, here we go. Microsoft on PC gaming. We lost our way. Promises a better future. So this was about six weeks ago. Um, like, okay, where, where's, our, where's our controller that just works natively on a computer the same way that it does on an Xbox? That should be part of that. That should definitely be part of that. The other day, actually, I was at a buddy's house and he loaded up Dark Souls. What, they pulled off Games games for Windows Live from, like, one game? That's my point. Games for Windows Live was still on it. And I was like, oh, that's depressing. That's not good. And, like, uh, I don't know. It seems so well-timed and poorly done. <laughs> well-timed and poorly done. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> it's like, like, they dropped it at a really good time where a lot of people really cared. But it's and just, didn't do anything. it's lip service if one part, like, see, that's the problem with Microsoft, is they're a very fragmented company. I mean, there's Microsoft hardware, there's Microsoft software, there's Microsoft consumer, there's Microsoft enterprise for all of the different things. And I mean, it's not necessarily going to help you personally as a Microsoft employee to advance the whole company. It's more your own... It's your own area. department. So th then there's Microsoft Game Studios, then there's Microsoft, then there's Xbox, and so there's there's all these different things. And just because, like, one dude at Microsoft is like, yeah, we lost our way on the PC, we're sorry, um, DirectX 12 will have more tessellation, or whatever, um, that, doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that, that all the ducks are actually in a row and everyone is committed to making the PC a better gaming platform, at least at Microsoft, which isn't to say that Valve and NVIDIA and AMD and all these other guys who are just sick of Microsoft being completely focused on Xbox and not focused on PC at all aren't just going to take matters into their own hands and create an OS and an ecosystem that works better than Microsoft's. And I personally believe very strongly that the reason the PC still is the dominant platform, at least for desktop computers, you can make arguments other ways in lots of other spaces, um, I think the reason that they're still dominant is because of gaming. Not because 
Okay, so to be clear, I don't think it's because everyone it just plays games on their PCs and that's the only reason they own them, so anyone who doesn't play games shouldn't have a PC. The reason is because I believe that gamers, particularly on the PC side, tend to be enthusiasts. Yeah. So when their mom comes to them and is like, Son, I'm buying a Mac! They're like, No! <laughs> and they stop it. <laughs> That doesn't mean that mom wouldn't have been just as happy with a Mac or Linux or anything else for that matter. It just means that because the enthusiasts and the tweakers and the hackers that Microsoft has really lost track of how to appease are still tied to that platform because they want to game on it. I think if gaming goes away, those guys lose that last tie that they ever had to the platform and those recommendations to other people start changing. I mean, that is what these companies keep forgetting is it's not about how many units of Android smartphone or Microsoft Windows PC or whatever the, the hackable platform du jour happens to be. It's not how many of those units you can sell to this guy. It's about how many people he goes out and influences and explains that the benefit of this is so great and that's why you should jump on board it and that is how a platform gains dominance. We've seen it time and time again and then when they start to close down the platform it starts to go away and it happens time and time again. So that I don't remember what the topic was anymore. But anyway, Jay's two cents uh, will be joining us. Did you have anything to say? Sorry. Um, there's there's a few things like the point about the uh, like the, the the influencer, the enthusiast that tells people what to buy is incredibly true, and we see that constantly in every way, shape, or form. And people just yeah just don't understand it. It's kind of disappointing because you see that like something super niche will happen with a product that no one knows about but that product starts selling way less or way more because of it. Even if there's a few, very small amount of people that know about it. Even if it's, it's like some, some bloody subreddit yeah. that cares about it, all of a sudden it's like, whoa, where'd that sales spike come from? Yeah. Because these people are influencers and their influence goes beyond what they type on the internet to other people who already know about it. They have real lives. Well, some of them have real lives. Some of them have real lives and talk to real people. Speaking of a really cool feature that I actually wasn't aware of, did you know that the HTC One wakes up from a full power off to uh, trigger an alarm? So if your battery dies in the night... How is it fully powered off then? If your battery dies in the night, so it's like off. And you know how it usually has enough? Like it has like half a percent and it'll wake up and then it'll be like, oh, sorry. It'll wake up an alarm and then power down trying to trying to trigger an alarm. So the alarm goes off. So it's that like clock battery in your phone. Or something. Because how it must be on in some form. No, because even like even I manually power it down. Yeah. Yeah. But it, there's got to be something, something still running. Something's going on. Yeah, that's actually really cool. Yeah, I, like the, I don't know if the One Max does it yet. Uh, speaking of which, I've, uh, I'm have i switched over to the One Max for now. Man, this thing's huge. Like look at it in relation to my hand. It's like redonkulous. See? See, my hand, Slick's hand. There you go. It's like, appropriate? Ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm kind of getting used to it already. I've only been using it for about four days. And uh, anyway, it's, 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 I, I don't remember. Okay, right, because I was talking about that feature where it wakes, it wakes it up because, oh, right, my wife was super mad because my alarm went off or something. And I was like, it won't happen again. I turned that phone I'm not using because I'm not using it. I turned that, I turned it off. And it woke itself up <laughs> at my normal alarm time, triggered the alarm, and I was like, stop it. And it went back to, and it turned off again. And it was like, off. Like, lock button doesn't do anything. I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't know if it's just that one. I have, I have to play around with it some more. That's actually kind of cool, because I don't care if my phone is, like, if I forgot to plug in my phone, I want my damn alarm to go off, because I don't want to miss things. Yeah. So it's actually really yeah, cool. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. I think it's, I think it's like, crazy awesome. All right, so why don't we pull Jay onto the show? I actually don't have my, uh, oh, thank you. No problem. Is it plugged into? Nope. Nope. Not plugged into anything. But that's okay. Uh, oh, what? do I plug into that? Wait. Whoa. Is, oh, the wrong ones. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just going to like deck myself out in all of the Christmas cheer today. I wish I had a red one too to go along with my green one. But you see how many pairs of headphones I can wear all at the same time. I don't <laughs> even hear anything. He's not here yet. And here User we go. Was moved to Hello, team. Jay. Hey, guys. What's going on? 
Not a whole lot. How are you? Well, I guess we do have a lot going on. We're streaming live <laughs> to thousands of people. Well, hello, thousands of people. Jay's Two Cents here. Thanks for uh, having me. All right. Why don't I go ahead and put on your little guest lower third there, and why don't you do a brief introduction? You guys have been you guys have been asking for Jay to come on the show for about one bazillion years. So for those of you who haven't heard of him, Jay, go ahead. Hey, guys. Jay's Two Cents here. I just do the YouTube thing like uh, everybody else, just trying to get my little piece of the corner there doing all kinds of pc reviews and uh custom tutorials and water cooling and if it has to do with a pc or tech i'm a geek and it fits right in so that's what i do cool that was very concise and what was your uh what was your youtube channel name it's jay's two cents and that's with a z not an s and i'm no relation to jay-z i am not a rapper that's unfortunate you'd be really rich a lot of people seem surprised by that honestly I mean, they, no they say, are you related to Jay-Z? No, not at all. So that, that one was an accident. It's funny because your ethnicity looks the same as Jay-Z's, based on yeah, the well, video of you I'm looking at right now over in this corner. Depends entirely on the lighting. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is we were, uh, we were filming NCIX Tech Tips today, and uh, we were doing a thing about Bitcoin mining, and I was like, oh, we should, uh, we should, put, like, we should put stuff all over my face so I look like a miner. And Ed was like, you can't you can't do blackface on this show. I'm like, no, I'm not talking Ooh. about I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like if I was a minor. And he's Risky. like he's like, oh, I see what you mean. Oh, we probably just shouldn't do it anyway. <laughs> you can make Very it. Risky. You can make it look like coal smears. Well, you could make it look like coal. I think they decided that we were just going to do it in the thumbnail so that they could control how coaly it looks and make sure that it didn't end up looking inappropriate and inset unset did. Uns ins insensitive that's the one <laughs> you got there. i'm having a bit of an off day today jay Still so you're not the only one. Oh my god after the day i've had I, this is a welcomed pace for me tell tell us a little bit about yourself what kind of day did you have today because youtube's not your only gig correct youtube is a hobby i am in i am an it engineer by day uh, also moonlight is an sqa software developer quality assurance tech for a software development company which shall remain unnamed, but yeah, I, I do wear a couple of different hats, and today's one of those days we had our company Christmas party at noon, we're trying to head out the office at about 11, and we had a major power outage at our data center, and we had to rush in, make sure our, our cooling backups were good to go, because if you've ever been to a data center and cooling goes down, it takes about five minutes for everything to overheat to death. Five minutes? Oh yeah, with the amount of racks in, uh, that we have in our data center in Irvine, it, it takes about five minutes from for the temperature in the room to rise about 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, nice racks. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Had to do it, sorry. So, <laughs> oh, don't be sorry. So what do you do to prevent the overheating at this point? Well, the data center that we have is all water-cooled. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem is, I mean, the pumps and everything stay running, but the HVAC system goes down because it's on the main grid. You can't power back up an HVAC system like that. So pretty much we have a direct line to Southern California Edison saying, please get your trucks here now before we lose millions of dollars of equipment. So tell me something, because I mean, this is this is something, again, not on the same uh, not on the same level as what you guys are doing over there. But I have had um, I have had a fan failure on a water cooling system before, just a PC grade water cooling system. And what the biggest problem I had there was the pressure that built up within the lines uh, as the water heated up and heated up and began to boil. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know if the viewers know this, but most processors, including graphics cards and some older CPUs, will actually go above 100 degrees before they will begin to throttle. So um, depending on what kind of a delta you normally maintain between your CPU and your liquid, um, you could actually reach liquid temperatures of near or above 100 degrees in very, very right. disastrous cases and i actually had this happen once where a fitting a tubing blew off a fitting and uh sprayed water all over the inside of a pc uh, i don't know if i've ever told you about this no oh it was terrible um anyway so i was wondering when the hvac system so to be clear guys hvacs our uh, hvac system refers to basically massive industrial grade uh, air conditioner that is designed to not necessarily condition air but in this case condition water and keep it cool um so what I had happen was I had tubing blow off. So what happens if your coolant boils? 
Uh, the coolant that we have actually is is treated in such a way that the boiling temperature is much higher than the normal 100 degrees Celsius where water would boil, kind of like a car. Uh, but it, in this case, what we actually had to do because we didn't have an ETA from the power company was we had to power down our servers. So we were running around to all of our, our server consoles trying to get all these servers powered down in the amount of time that our UPS would keep things flowing. Because <laughs> even without an HVAC, if water's flowing, you get a little bit of cooling. But if you don't get them shut down in time, they you've seen it, things will melt themselves. And these these servers, even though they're all xenon and whatnot, uh, they will throttle themselves, but the temperature rises so quickly, they'll die before they ever throttle. Now, I know that with consumer grade hardware, the way that uh, the way that overheating protection often works nowadays, like when I had that problem, that was a long time ago, the way that that overheating protection works now is usually when the CPU reaches a thermal limit, this cold, the whole system will power down. Now with a server, does it not necessarily work the same way? It can, but the, the thing is when you're dealing with thousands of racks in the same room, the temperature spikes so fast that it doesn't actually have time to power down before damage occurs. Genius, excellent. Yeah, so that's why you see articles like in like last year where Google, I believe, was pulling in water from one of the natural ponds that was extremely cold, where they were getting cold water without having to actually condition it themselves. I don't know if you saw that article earlier yeah. in the year, but it was pretty fascinating. Yeah, that's very cool. Actually, I remember back in uh, back in the days when the only forum I really used to troll with was ExtremeSystems.org. I remember seeing an incredibly cool build blog where what this guy did was he buried, I think it must have been a couple hundred feet of copper tubing. Um, and then he, he actually mm -hmm. had an excavator and he excavated a significant portion of his backyard and put it down below frost level. Right. So it, rather than go, rather than being sub subject to any kind of heat from the sun or any kind of cold from the uh, from the frigid air above, every season, all all seasons, it was basically the same temperature. And then he had uh, he had a pump, a series of pumps that on the one end that was actually running tubing or uh, running water through this snake of tubing buried in his yard and then up to his PC in his house. <laughs> That's pretty. Yes. Yeah. So that's a very that similar thread. type thing. Did you? I did, and I think I remember one of the one of the challenges was condensation because of the depth. Yes, one of the yep. challenges was condensation. I think one of the other challenges was actually. Um, I don't think he was using copper at every stage. I think there was some right. PVC, and oh. then he had issues with filtration and yeah. like some junk getting into it. So he had to have a filter. But it was a really cool project. I was like, wow, I want to do that. Yeah, I remember people asked him, "Why are you doing this?" And his answer was, "Why not?" <laughs> <laughs> indeed and you yep, can so that's that's what i do by day and uh yeah, the, the whole youtube thing for me is just kind of a moonlighting gig just because i like it so i do it here is the thread this is on overclock.net so i this might actually be a different one than the one that uh someone posted this than the one that i was looking at although it might be the same one i don't even remember here let's see how old this is because if it's uh this is 2010 it could just be a copy over though. Could be a copy over. Not sure if I... Oh yeah, this might this might be the guy. Anyway, very, very, very cool project. Maybe it was just PVC. Maybe he didn't do copper. Maybe I'm not even remembering it correctly. Either way, very, very, very cool project. Alright, let's go back to our guest thing here. So we haven't actually started any of our actual topics. I know we promised a Twitter blitz to you guys earlier. We will go back and we will look at those tweets, but if you have any questions that you want to blitz to Jay, I, th I don't think I ever said thanks for joining us on the show, Jay. Thanks for joining us on the show. I'm glad you're here. Hey, no problem. Appreciate it. ADD stream. I know. I know. I know. All right, so let's move into our first guest topic here, and this is the cyanogen phone that has now been approved by Google. So here's a Google Plus post. Um, I don't, Luke, why don't you give us your thoughts on this first? There's been some interesting stuff cycling around this because kind of everyone thought that they were going to have to fight the man to be able to get this to actually exist at all. And then now Google's just kind of giving them their blessing, which is interesting. So I'm wondering if some, some talks happen behind doors and they decided to be friends with each other. But ignoring all that because it's approved and I don't really actually know what happened behind doors, the phone is really interesting in itself. It's, it's, have you ever actually used an Oppo phone? No, I haven't. Me neither. All right then. Which, yeah, I want one of these though. Have you looked into this at all? 
Nope. The camera is specifically interesting, if you can see that right there, because it can swivel, I think it's 207 degrees. I should have put that in the dock, but I think it's 207 degrees. And at every single point in that swivel, it can lock. Oh. So with some old laptops, especially from Acer, they would have webcams in the top of the screen that you could flip over, but it was either facing at you locked or flipped over locked. This one, you can kind of point it wherever you want. Cool. This is actually a really smart solution to the whole crappy front-facing camera. Crappy and good. Because now it's one really good camera, just you face it wherever you want it to go. And which I guess is that really gives easy. you more room for optics as well, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, so here they're talking about the camera. So the world's first rotating camera smartphone. Apple was the first in the world to release a 13 megapixel smartphone. Now... You've got six, so the camera's constructed from 67 different components featuring a 206 degree rotation that will firmly lock in position at any angle without shaking or moving while you frame the shot. Which is like pretty impressive, although all I really see coming out of this is... A lot more selfies. A lot more selfies. <laughs> <laughs> much, much better selfies. <laughs> at least they'll be higher quality, I guess, but I think there's going to be more of them, which isn't necessarily a good thing. I guess it depends on who you are. But that is actually pretty cool, and it is a really, really high-end phone. F2.0 lens? Wow. It's kind of a big deal. They're showing well, the, the, the flash there. The so camera you know. aside, I've, I've always been a big fan of the Cyanogen project. I was an early adopter of it back when I used Android. Uh, that camera is pretty awesome, though. I, I imagine all of the front-facing blinded selfies because the LEDs will be in your face, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to start punishing people for taking selfies at some point here. Amen. Yep. I agree. So, so what better way to do that? Uh, keep going. I, I, like the, I like the fact that you can lock it in any position, though, because now you're not... If you want to use your phone for some sort of recording, you can lay it flat or, or mount it to something. I, I think it's pretty cool. I would like to check this out, that's for sure. This is another feature that I wanted to cover, which is their O-Touch. So the idea behind this is that, say you're say you're reading a web page or on Reddit or something on your phone. Can we ban companies from calling their features the first letter of their company and then dash something? S Pen, O Touch, S Voice, S Voice, oh G Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> it's just way too easy. Um, anyways, so th the idea is that you can scroll through things and use your touch screen in basic ways by actually using the back of the screen so you don't have to put your fingers in the way all the time. And I think that's really interesting because there's a lot of websites that are being mobile optimized that are completely ignoring the old rules that you don't put things that are interesting below the fold. Now things are very scrollable because of yep. touch screens. So, being able to easily scroll through someone's website or Reddit, Reddit is very actively looked at, it's, is nice by being able to touch the back of the phone because you can use it with one hand for one big thing. And if it's a really big phone, like yours, it's a lot harder. Like with a smaller phone, you can just do everything with one hand. But with a big, really big phone, sometimes you're just holding it and you would have to use a second hand. To yeah, I mean, it. totally. When things are bigger, sometimes you have to use two hands. <laughs> So this has a 5.9 inch screen, which I do find a little bit on the big side. Although what I notice about it immediately is that unlike the one Max, which has the boom sound speakers on either side of the screen, what they have done is they've gone with a much slimmer bezel on the one side. So it should actually be overall physically smaller. So that's, uh, that's good. I'm glad to see someone innovating in terms of input rather than um, doing what Samsung's doing and moving backwards. It's like, yeah, we can't really figure out what else to do with our high-end phone. So uh, here's a stylus. <laughs> but don't worry, you can like you can draw a little calculator on your screen with it. I do like that. Uh, did you use it? it? It's yes. interesting. I I, I could have swore I saw something last year saying that Apple had filed a patent for the rear touch display. So is this going to be another lawsuit on Apple's hands? Oh God. Oh, potentially, actually. I mean. It never seems to really end with those guys, so... Nope. More I, patent wars. I think smartphones have been kind of stale the last couple of years, so I'm really looking forward to somebody to come and shake things up. You know what? You're one of the, you're one of the people that I think I would agree with about this whole thing, because my, my, when I first got my iPhone 4, I looked at it and I went, well, this does everything I could possibly want that, that without some kind of a huge paradigm shift, this does everything right. I could possibly want to do with a phone. The only issue with the iPhone 4 now is that iOS has gotten so heavy that it runs like an absolute dog um, on mm -hmm. the iPhone 4. But when, it, when I got it, I swear, I was never dealing with any kind of laggy text input, that's for sure. So there is something amiss. Uh, with with the iPhone 4's hardware and software that is making some seriously bad things well, happen with flash it, but as well. I haven't seen 
I, I, I haven't seen some kind of huge, amazing innovation in the last little while. I mean, do, what, what, what do you think will absolutely help this? Gosh, you know, I don't, I've been thinking about that myself, especially since in, in working in IT, we're constantly dealing with new devices. And I, I think this is the first year I've not purchased a new smartphone for the year. I normally am an annual upgrader of some sort, but I think I'm really looking forward to some of the, the technology that we looked at last year at CES with the transparent displays. Mm -hmm. I would love to see something like that. But again, I think technology in the smartphone arena has moved so fast that they kind of outpace themselves. And not to mention all the lawsuit debacles over the last couple of years have really slowed down technology. So everyone wanting to be, you know, the patent holder of this or that has stalemated the entire industry as far as I'm concerned. Those patent wars have gotten pretty ridiculous. I mean, you, and then you look at something like the wearable space where there's so much innovation left and it's so much more usable. I mean, the smartphone is great, but I mean, uh, Apple's whole laughable thing where it's like, you can't make anything that looks like an iPhone. Well, okay, but it's just, it's a thing with a screen on one side and not on the, oh, we could have a smartphone with screens on both sides. There we but go. But like, that's... And, okay, but... Aside, we we how, have those, actually, I think. They're releasing one in Russia or something and no one cares. How do you make a smartphone that isn't a screen on one side, buttons around the edge, or in the case of the G2, who buttons on the back and... You know... Cameras. I think I'm really looking... I was at Samsung's keynote last CES regarding the their foldable, tech, their bendable screen. I, I would love to see some of the concepts they showed on that come to fruition, you know, with the folding tablet or the, the wallet phone, yeah. something like that. Because right now, I look at what's being done with uh, flexible displays and curved curved displays in particular as a very evolutionary step. I, I, see, I see something like the G Flex um, as just because Testing we can. Waters, yeah. Yeah. Not right. as because this is something that people actually need or actually desire. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely cool tech, but I don't think it would be quickly adopted. I, I, you know, because I, I think part of it is you're going to be dealing with soft, soft materials on the screen, which could potentially scratch really poorly. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a very good point. All right, our next guest top. Actually, let's do your. Why don't we do your guest Twitter blitz here? So let's see if we have any uh, any excellent questions for you here. All right, playing Twilight Princess on my PC while watching the stream. Also, the bitrate is good. Source quality looks golden. Thank you, Darren. No drops. I agree. It looks great this week. Uh, the mighty noob says, "Just started watching your channel, Jay, and loving your content." Hey, thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, apparently BlackBerry has had the powered off alarm for a long time and Starbucks says that it's one of the things that he or she missed when apparently someone has had that since early 2000 with Nokia's from the 90s cool all right I don't see many questions for Jay here so we might have to come back to these ones later and uh, hopefully there's uh, there's a few here blah 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 lots more comments about the the bitrate and, uh, okay, well, why don't we just move into our next topic for now? Guys, if you have any questions for Jay, please do post them. Intel reportedly eyes future 18-core Broadwell chip. For Xeon. Well, yes. In fact, their, their picture here really indicates the uh, kind of investigative journalism about <laughs> IT hardware that might <laughs> perhaps go on at certain unnamed sources for this particular article. As a as a guy who builds servers, I am particularly interested in that, especially if we can if that means we can have less physical servers and more VMs due to the extra cores. I would be extremely happy with that. All right, talk a little bit about because for gamers in particular, well, okay, particularly before AMD Mantle comes into play, which will happen. I mean, well, okay, Dice said December, so they still have eleven days, but. <laughs> We'll see. I, I wonder about how hard the developers are working on the 24th, the 25th, the 31st, and the 1st. So so that's four days out of the next 12. <laughs> probably are kind of write-offs. But um, 
Anyway, so in theory, Mantle's coming soon, and that's going to help gamers leverage multiple cores. But on the desktop, we we have kind of looked at what Intel's been doing lately with reduced power consumption and uh, the capability of adding more cores, although they haven't bloody well given us any in the last couple iterations yeah. here, um, and the capability of adding more cores, and we've kind of gone, okay, yeah, that's interesting, but we don't really care. Whereas in the HPC space or in the server space, this is a huge deal for you. So talk about what an 18-core chip means to you. Well, when, when you build virtual machines, you're basically taking resources from the hardware on the server and allocating it towards digital computers. So you have one physical computer or server where you create multiple virtual machines all doing separate tasks, and they can be different servers entirely doing different things. So the stronger the processor and the more memory allocated to it allows you to do a lot more in a, in a smaller physical space. But once again, when you deal with that type of, of threading or that many cores in one you know, package, you're going to be dealing with a lot of heat as well. Um, but as a server guy, I would think that exponentially we would have a lot less heat if we had smaller packages that can do more rather than having more packages putting off massive heat into the air. So I was looking at that article and thinking of it, about it from a gamer perspective. Um, I don't think it means a whole lot for gamers, obviously. I mean, we're barely catching up to four core and eight core possibilities or 12 yeah. core um, if you're on X79. But I think that just like we were dealing with in the late 2000s, you know, hardware is still outpacing the threading capabilities of the developers. So I don't think gamers are going to benefit from this whatsoever. Yep, and I mean, I think this is just more reinforcement that gamers, Intel has no plans to stop with the whole, we're just going to add more cores and make them more power efficient and we are not going to increase clock speeds and we're not going to increase per core performance plan. That's not going anywhere. So um, there you go, guys. Intel is more focused on the bigger picture of where compute performance needs to go in the future and right. uh, less, less focused on individuals playing video games. At the same time, though, yeah. a lot more video games recently have been GPU bound instead of CPU bound, which is why the GPU game is still so exciting and there's still so much war going on. But I have to look at that and go, well, the GPU developers probably know that Intel and AMD, for that matter, I mean, look at AMD, they just knocked high-end uh, dedicated CPUs completely off their roadmap. I mean, they're just not that into it anymore. Uh, I'm, really, I'm really concerned with what the, the TPU is going to look like on the overclock side, especially for the 8 and 10 cores, because everything I do is overclocked. It has to be. And I was really disappointed with the way Haswell turned out regarding the temperatures. So... Yeah. I'm wondering what this is going to do as they add more physical heat in there as well. Well, you know what? I think we're going to get to the point very, very soon. Actually, one of the things that I saw in Intel's rumored upcoming, I think it was an 8-core Extreme Edition, but their entire upcoming LGA 20, whatever it is. Anyway, the replacement for LGA 2011. Like 2011 minus yeah, ha 14, Haswell, Haswell E. The uh, the rumored the rumored upcoming refresh was that these chips are going from 130 watt TDPs to 140 watt TDPs, which means that if you start to get higher than about 140 watts, I mean, look at something like the uh, I can't even remember the what the Uber's stupid thing is called the 9590, yeah, AMD mm -hmm. 9590. Uh, yep. TDP. That chip basically required liquid cooling. That had a 220 watt TDP. So as we start to get above sort of 150, 180 watts, we're going to be requiring liquid cooling even on the desktop. And that is going to be a huge, huge problem for overclockers who are not installing triple radiators into their machines. Yep. Yep. I had an 8350 that I overclocked to 5.14 at its highest, and the temperature output on that was just massive. I mean, I was running a, a triple and a double rad, uh, 45 millimeter thickness, and was still hitting the edge of that thermal uh, limit to where I was uncomfortable with it and had to back it off. But yeah, I mean, I, I get the power efficiency. I get that they want to have, you know, two in one capability with their new chips. Um, but enthusiasts like me, I. You know, I'm willing to cool it if necessary, but I, I want to make sure that we're not going to be dealing with these low overhead capabilities like we're, we were seeing with Haswell. I, I get a lot of flack from people from staying on Ivy Bridge, but I've, I mean, I've got a chip that's a golden chip and I won't move away from it until something really lures me. I'm on Sandy Bridge and have no problems with it at all. I mean, to put this in perspective, I'm on Sandy Bridge E. Um, so I'm on LGA 2011 and I was literally holding an Ivy Bridge E chip but it was in its box. 
So I had my CPU out of my socket because I was doing a motherboard swap and I just had to open the box on the Ivy Bridge E chip in order to move to that one. And I was like, too much effort. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because there is no benefit. Even so, Sandy to Ivy, Ivy to Haswell, we haven't really, for overclockers, we haven't really seen a benefit. And I mean, how much of this uh, direction do you think is, uh, and, and the move away from sort of appeasing the enthusiast and, you know, looking for the solutions providers and how you can work with those guys, do you think has to do with Apple? I mean, look at the Mac Pro. How much of Intel's intention of providing something like, uh, you know, a 12 core, 10 core um, workstation chip as opposed to just a server oriented chip, um, how much of that has to do with Intel's move towards, well, no, workstations in the future are going to be this. They're going to be this garbage can shaped thing and they're going to have one CPU in them and we're not going to do that whole dual CPU thing anymore. So guys, you better find a way to put more cores on an individual CPU. I mean, I think Mac Pro with Broadwell is going to be an incredibly compelling little can. Right, and potentially with something like the Mac Mini, where you're getting much a lot of power and a much smaller form factor. I, I do think Intel is more concerned with form factor than, like you said, those dual chip solutions, which are server systems. Yeah. Definitely, as we see power draw go down and mobile Intel chips become much more Yeah, speaking awesome. of Broadwell, Intel's saying that we could be looking at, or well, the, okay, rumored, rumored. Uh, the rumor is that we could be looking at Broadwell chips as low as 4.5 watts. So we could be looking at everywhere from 18 core server chips down to four and a half watt tablet chips on the same basic architecture, which is uh, pretty exciting. That's really <laughs> awesome for a certain form factor, like Jay was just saying. It just has nothing to do with gamers and overclockers. No. It just really has me wondering where the future goes from there. I mean, we've seen this trend so many times in tech where things get smaller and smaller, and now just like the phablets, we're back to going bigger and bigger. So when is the cycle going to repeat? <laughs> uh, wearables, right there. Yeah. Yep. It's already happening. And we'll make those smaller and smaller and smaller until we want to turn them into fashion statements, and then they get bigger and bigger. Yeah, Mind exactly. you, I think that's happening already, because one of the... Um, the wearable bra? Uh, no, not the wearable bra. Yeah, oh, when those get bigger, that's definitely a good thing. Uh, wow. <laughs> well, come on, I had to make the joke. Uh, oh, no, no, the thing that I was actually going to talk about was the Neptune Pine. <laughs> so this is the uh, the smartwatch Kickstarter. Actually, 26 hours to go, and I'm not necessarily recommending to back this thing, guys, because I think it's stupid. But I, I backed it so that I could get one, so that I could do a video of so it. So we could show you that it's stupid. Um... But this thing looks absolutely ridiculous. I mean, look at the thing. It's supposed to be a smartwatch, and it, the guy's using it. Like, like it's, it's not that much smaller than an iPhone 4. I was actually marveling the other day that my iPhone 4's screen area is literally one-third of the <laughs> One Max. Like, if you take the thing and you put it, if you put it portrait next to the landscape One Max, it, it, it almost lines up screen for screen, wow. and it's about three of them. Um, so, I mean... These trends are, it's like they're happening at like hyperspeed now. Smaller, faster, we're, we haven't even released anything yet, but we're going to make it smaller and then bigger and then smaller again. <laughs> yep. Jay just fell down the like, stairs. Eventually they'll come up with the Fallout style huge yeah! arm thing. Like armband things yeah. with curved displays. Yeah. And you're just like, bloop, 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 bloop. So you can have multiple conversation windows open with different people. Uh, well, like, I'll keep you so, on my biceps so yeah. you can enjoy that. There we go, perfect. Beautiful. I would love to spend a day in just in one of these think tanks of these companies to see where they really are trying to take technology because I honestly feel like some of these companies are truly lost where they they have no idea what they're going to bring us now. I, I think like, Samsung's always like that. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. More yeah, I would plastic. Agree. It's like, well, we'll just release like every phone and then the ones that sell well, we'll, we'll tweak those and then... Release them again. And then we'll release them as a camera and then we'll release them as a watch. <laughs> And then we'll release them as, like, underpants. If we can get the, side to wear the underpants, then The smart underwear. Smart underwear. It tells will. you when you gotta go. It tells you when you already went. It tells you when you should dance. That, <laughs> Has, that does it have a wake-up alarm on it? <laughs> Vibrating alarm. Psy underwear. You ate too much. Start dancing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh boy, <laughs> but 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 then again, you know this this whole unknown is kind of what makes it exciting at the same time too. But every now and then there are those companies that come out with something that they hype up like crazy, and you just go, what, what, yeah. what? Why did you possibly think this? I'm was sorry, what were you idea? thinking? Like exactly. I, I think I think Galaxy Gear is just a complete disaster. I think Samsung did it so they could be 
it, so they could have something on the market. I mean, I think, I, I, okay, this is sort of the cynic in me, but I think they're just releasing it with as many features as possible so that if there's any kind of a patent dispute later, they can be like, well, no, we already had it. Like, we, <laughs> we brought it to market, we did this, so that they can just sit and they can have this stupid product on the market that makes no sense, and then they can wait for Apple to release the iWatch, and then they can make, like, as few tweaks as possible to gear so that it's not a copy, but it's like an iteration of gear, but so that they can actually just clone iWatch. So all the marketing is actually just so the judge can find the evidence that it exists? Yeah. I, I, that, that's yeah. what I think. Which, which takes us to the bigger problem, at least here in the United States, is just how many patent trolls there are. Yeah. And companies wouldn't have to do this if they weren't concerned about the patent trolls, if the laws actually protected the innovators and not the copywriters. On the other hand, the flip side of that is if you have a great idea, what can you do if someone like an Apple or someone like a Samsung flat out just decides to steal it? Because I think, it, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, it's so frustrating to me because it's the problem is then you patent the idea and you never, it never comes to fruition. You have this great idea sitting on the shelf because the guy who patented it couldn't make it happen. So it is a double edged sword and yep. I, it really stinks. And, but because none of these companies are willing to collaborate with each other, where they all are bitter enemies, no one works together either. Yeah. We need more giant alliances, like the DVD alliance. Okay, but the problem with giant alliances is that then you end up with Wally. -E, I know. And then it's just like, because as far as I can tell, if Costco and Amazon merged, they would basically just call themselves the by and large. And <laughs> They would be that corporation. They could totally do it. They could totally do it because there would be this... Oh my this... god, imagine Amazon showrooms inside of Costco's. Oh. I just peed oh. myself. I know. Imagine you could get free shipping from Amazon if you just shipped it to a Costco and picked it up. I, 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 okay, imagine if the entire top of a Costco warehouse was like Amazon drone, drone helipads. Drone landing area? Like... Oh my, so you could order things to the Costco. Because Costco is so good at like bulk logistics and and pricing and all of these things and customer service oh, yeah. and like Amazon is so good at these things. If they just kind of got together and were like, yeah, we're just gonna crush everything. Costco's on. Costco's I'll tell you on. what's frustrating, especially with Amazon, is I live. I can see out my front yard about two miles away. There's a brand new 1.5 million square foot Costco shipping warehouse distribution center on the west coast. Sorry, you said Costco. Did you mean Amazon? I, I'm sorry. I mean Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I can see it. In fact, I have a family member who works there. Yet I can't go pick anything up, and I still have to pay full price shipping, even though it literally never. It goes from a van to my door. They use like a third party carrier that's local, <laughs> and they still charge me for full price for shipping. And you can tell when it's local because I'll have, it'll be four o'clock in the afternoon and it's giving me another nine hours to order it to have it by tomorrow. So it's obvious it's right down the street, <laughs> but they don't give me the option to pick it up. So that's incredibly frustrating. And I would love to see drones in my area because I live in a high wind area and I can imagine the amount of injuries that'll come of that because of <laughs> out of control drones. <laughs> I think we're a long way away from the drone thing. I'm, I'm in yeah. the, this was a marketing stunt camp. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. for it, and I think it'll happen, but not for a long time. It's a long way away. And I think I think what's more likely to happen in the more near term is pickup depots. This was actually one of the things that I really wanted to see happen at NCIX uh, when I worked there. I wanted, rather than focusing on larger, more beautiful stores, what I wanted was, I don't know if anyone ever shopped at like the old NCIX on Broadway in Vancouver. If anyone on the stream ever shopped there, that place was horrible. Um, the front of the front, the storefront was like covered in like ugly tech posters and there was like a counter and then there was like the place where I would always hang out because I was always like going there with my computer to like troubleshoot things and I'd like borrow tester parts from the RMA department so I could like try things and then I'd like buy stuff based on what worked and <laughs> anyway. Um, but they had like this old horrible dusty PC in an acrylic case on the right and then they had like cases and printers all over the front of the store. And then in the back, they just had storage. And that is what I would have loved to see yeah. for an e-tailer. Tons of them. Tons of little, okay, there's a little like tech area where you can get some service done and people can come in and like troubleshoot things and they can swap out parts and then buy things. Um, a little bit of limited inventory of like, like my, my concept for this was two brands per category, period. No matter what. Okay, so video cards, we stock EVGA, we stock XFX, that's it. 
memory, we stock Corsair, we stock Kingston, that's it. Or whatever, it doesn't have to be. Or whatever. But the point is two brands per category, and then you can special order anything. So you'd have, you'd have like, like basically two trucks that just cross the country, you know, every week and go like this and then just do pickups and drop-offs at each location as needed so you could have anything shipped for free anywhere if you're willing to wait a maximum of six days or five business days or whatever it is. I think that is the future more than something like drones. That's what I liked about NCIX so much. That's the only only real reason why I pretty much only buy things from NCIX is because I don't have to pay shipping. I get it shipped to an NCIX location and then just go pick it up. Screw paying shipping. Well, you know, Amazon has that locker system but I don't trust it because when I looked at the local lockers in my area, one of them, I kid you not, was 7-Eleven. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I didn't understand it. So I, there was no way I was even going to try it. But 7-Eleven was a locker pickup. I had, I didn't even know that was possible. Yeah. I had no idea. It's I mean, almost I... like if you're willing to allow us to ship stuff to your location and you'll stick it in the back, we'll pay you. But that's what it seemed like yeah, to me. Yeah, that's sketchy in my opinion. Not super down for that. Someone says private little PC stores have tried that idea. The price markup is too high. How have private, how can little PC stores try that idea? The whole idea is that you right. have a national chain. It's massive scale. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, that's not how the idea works. NCIX does that. Yeah, so. NCIX does that. I just wanted to see more locations and yeah. smaller and just everywhere. That's, that's why I said I liked doing it. It's because it was an option. Anyway. <laughs> All right, it's so awesome let's option. move into our last big topic here, which is BitTorrent's sync. Wow, this is amazing. Personal cloud. You know what, Jay? Why don't I let you kick us off on this one? Because you must have a lot to say about this. You, you know, it it's scary to me just because a lot of the immediate thoughts that go along with the word BitTorrent, to have my data traveling and funneling through them when the whole BitTorrent thing all about in the beginning was piracy. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how much I would trust it. I like the fact that it, the space is only limited by your own personal space. And the bandwidth uh, and, is and, only limited by your own personal bandwidth. Right. And, and I thought that, that that concept is great, but I don't know if the person trying to market this is the right person. I mean, the mm. whole BitTorrent thing just scares me. BitTorrent's been trying to change their name for a long time, though, and they're changing what they're developing as well. So they're doing sync and they're doing chat systems and they're kind of moving away from their... Right, oh, which idea. which kind of goes to show, though, the the reputation they've already created for themselves. When we, when my first reaction is BitTorrent, oh, I'm I'm concerned about security. That how many other people have that same reaction to it? But what part in BitTorrent are you worried about security with? The fact that they have piracy ties with being utilized for piracy, or people actually being able to break in? Um. I think when you have a community that in the past has been pretty much all having to do with piracy, I think immediately the thought that goes along with that is people tr trying to break in because that's just what they do. That's the way I feel about it. Form it's because most people that are using torrenting applications aren't the people cracking things. They're people acquiring the things that were cracked by someone else. So I think it's a different type. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just, I think it's a different no. type of piracy. It's not, it's not people hacking lines. It's people hacking software so they can release it for free. My personal opinion though, is I don't, I don't store anything on the cloud. And, and I know this isn't cloud storage, but they are still, we're using cloud funneling, uh, almost like a point to point to your own personal network. Yeah. But I don't, I don't like my information traveling through these unsecured networks that I have no idea where they are. So I personally have my own VPNs and I have my own access to my networks. But then again, I'm, I'm on a geek level that the average consumer isn't going to be on. Right. So and if, if someone's the average consumer and still worried about that kind of stuff, they can take other precautions too. It's not perfect. Nothing will be perfect. But uh, like something you can do is uh, encrypt your stuff before you send it. Like encrypt your stuff before you put it in a sync folder because then it's at least slightly more secure. So yeah, I'm just, man in the I'm just wondering like how that. many average people would know to do that or even know how to do that, even with simple tutorials or tools. Yeah, but then how many average people are going to be transferring data across these sync lines that is like super worried yeah, but if they lose it? I kind of feel like this is the future of storage, though. I mean, I think we're really looking at so much being on the, you know, the interweb and intranets and these, these different cloud funnels and uh, these point-to-point -point services. I think I think we're, we are inevitably going to have security holes and, and issues in there. I mean... Target alone this week, right? Forty million credit cards lost. Yeah, yeah. And they are, and they have massive 
massive third party companies constantly trying to break their system to find these holes, yet it still yeah, happened. But because they're a giant target as well. My mom isn't a giant Get it, target. target? Oh, um, <laughs> no, but like if you, when you look at something like how when Adobe got cracked, they got cracked because they're this giant actual honey pot with real honey in it um, of things that you can get if you break into it. If you're it's it's not as common for someone like my mom to get attacked. It's more common for that. So personally, like it's it's obviously what risk do you want to take in this situation? It's not there I, isn't a perfect solution, but I didn't I'm get a chance to like this. I didn't get a chance to research it fully in depth, but my question is, where's the hub, and can somebody somehow monitor that hub that with malicious intent? I don't think it's based off of a hub, because I think based on their technology, it's going through your own lines. So it, I don't think it's ever interfacing with BitTorrent servers, it's going through your own lines. I'll have to, I'll have to definitely research that more, because I'm curious as to how they can establish that connection without seeing the data. I don't think there's a ton of information. Yeah, there's not a ton yet. Um, it's just uh, basically they've got the informational page up. So guys, I'll just show this to you right here. So mm. your data belongs to you is their whole thing. If everything they say here is true, so access your files everywhere, create sync folders, open on any computer, phone, or tablet, access docs, photos, etc., etc., etc. Um, sync never stores your files on servers, so they stay safe from data breaches and prying eyes. Send and sync without speed limits and free. If all of this ends up being true, then we have one revolutionary concept on our hands. If any of it isn't, then it might be just another me too. But the one thing that I can say about BitTorrent to, I guess, um, you know, yeah, the word has become synonymous with piracy, but that's just all it is. It's a word. Um, BitTorrent has legitimate uses, and we actually used it not that long ago for something that I looked at and I went, this would be absolutely impossible or extremely costly without BitTorrent. And that was when we did our capture, um, our gameplay capture and image quality comparison between a bunch of different consoles. And I was looking at it going, how the hell? are we going to send out these multiple Huge gigabyte files. files to all the hundreds of people that are going to hit them all at once? And the answer was BitTorrent. It was incredibly easy. Everyone was getting great download speeds and having this peer-to-peer -peer network um, really validated the, the protocol to me. It's being able to see that an individual like myself could just go, okay, Let's like make something happen. Let's get a file out there that is that is a legitimate file that has nothing to do with any kind of piracy just so people can see it and compare image quality is great. And if they can take that um if they can take that distributed sort of approach and that that decentralized approach and apply it to things like the security of my personal files or my personal chats i think that's fantastic because i the public cloud makes me extremely uncomfortable yeah. i don't store yeah. anything um i don't store anything very personal there because um just the fact that it's never actually deleted is is very very disconcerting to me so I do use a personal cloud. I probably don't have one that's as secure as what you're doing, but I would make the argument that it's certainly a, a hell of a lot better than a public cloud. And if this is at least that much better than public cloud, even if it's not as good as the very best thing you could build on your own with a whole lot of networking know-how, then I'll settle for that. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you 100% on that. I, it's definitely sounds like one of the you know legit service that's been abused because of the fact that being a peer-to-peer -peer allows people to abuse that sort of system. Uh, but if this gives people, like you said, the freedom to be able to securely transfer files from their own networks, to, I mean, let's say next month, there's something very important you guys left back at the studio on that machine and you need, get right in there through BitTorrent, pull it to yourself. I can see the benefits of that. And this is something I'll definitely research and maybe even try out and, and, and give some information on myself. But yeah, I've been, I've been off of the consumer level point to point and peer to peers for so long now I'm not as in touch as I'd like to be. Yeah, and I mean I, one other like huge application for this is in spite of these things getting larger, the storage on them seems to keep not getting larger. <laughs> My yeah. data plan in the last 5 years has gone from I think I used to have Oh, it was something stupid, like 500 megs, and I have 5 That's gigs now. That's what I'm now. running right now. <laughs> yeah. So in another five years, if I'm able to get a 10x scale, get 10x scaling on that again, and I can have 50 gigs a month, having something in a little personal BitTorrent cloud where I can have all of my files 
at my home, replicated to my office, and then accessible anywhere where I have, you know, LTE 5 or whatever it is by that point, that'll be fantastic. That so, is a future that I can that I can get into. So the, the workings of what he was just explaining is you can have things automatically syncing everything, so they're just always mirroring each other, or yeah. you can have it where you can selectively download things or just remotely view them. So you and, don't have to use all the storage on your phone. And you can do that by user groups, or you can do that by individual folders or whatever else you want. It looks amazing. It just has to be awesome. And the P2P nature of it is a nice little security adder. Yeah, I, and I do, like you said about the, you know, the data plans and, and the amount of bandwidth. It's unfortunate that so many carriers and because and, let's face it, if we're talking mobile, we are going to be at the mercy of whatever our carrier's plan is. Yep. That everyone's gone away from unlimited. You know, the, the speed got faster. Everyone's bandwidth has grown, yet they found a way to market to us by giving us limited data caps, which I, I don't know how it is in Canada, but I know here we've, I was on an unlimited plan for nine years before I got stuck on a capped plan simply because I wanted a newer phone. Yep. So I could see a system like that, if you don't set it up just right, just wrecking your cell bill. Yeah. But then, like we said, you can selectively download things. Or yep. you, you can have it so that it can see everything, but doesn't sync any of it. And then yeah. remotely access it or just not sync it at all. All right. So let's go to Jay's Twitter Blitz before we, uh, before we move on to our other topics. Jay, can I create virtual machines and run them at the same time? For example, one Ubuntu, one Windows, and display them on two different monitors? Absolutely. In fact, you can display them on any uh, remote desktop as well. In fact, we don't even have monitors hooked up to these machines. They're just a box that then you remote into different IPs and they're virtual machines on that system. So you could have as many virtual machines as you want, as long as you have the hardware to allocate to it. Awesome. Amazon. Oh, oh okay. Um, someone says Amazon should open up small pickup shops that only serves as a pickup spot. Works fine for big companies here in Denmark. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that is what we were talking about. Agreed. Um, uh, where does the world switch? Okay, works Someone says working at an Amazon warehouse. It's pretty disappointing that I can't pick up my own order and walk out with it. It's right <laughs> there. So it's not just you, Jay. And it may end up coming from a different state. Um, Evan says, Jay, do you think that AMD will try to pick up the enthusiasts that Intel has left behind on the desktop overclocking side? I think they already have, just based on the Radeon move, a Radeon move with getting in bed with the developers, especially Battlefield 4. Everyone now is seems they're going pro AMD, which just six months ago, if you had AMD, you were kind of ridiculed. Yep. Um, I run a home server. Do you or Jay know a good app that lets me manage the files on it from the WAN? Do you? How do you do it for yours? Do, do, do you? Do you? Okay, math mathages or ooh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. If you specifically run Windows Home Server, then you'll do that through a browser. But if you're right. talking about a different kind of home server, then uh, we'd have to know what kind it is. I think. Yeah, not enough info. Sorry, man. Post on the forum. That that 140 characters. People will help you. <laughs> All the acronyms. Tobin contributes, uh, Asus, Samsung, HTC are all just throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks. Smartphone saturation equals desperation. Yeah, I would make the argument that HTC hasn't done that as much. The Anymore. one the one was the one, and the, they did it for a long time. Yeah. And they're starting, I mean, now there's so the one mini. Again. And the one Max, which is like one, but it's like bigger. Didn't we see something last week about an Asus phone? Uh, the pad phone? I think they only have a couple phones, though. And they're not available here, so we don't really get much exposure to them. Mm. I, I thought, yeah, my, my wife actually linked me something talking about an Asus phone with their own OS, but it still runs on Google, so I don't know. I didn't really look at it. Mr. Hope she's not watching. M. Strand says, Jay, do you like MyCloud from WD or is a dedicated two-bay NAS preferred with some kind of custom software setup if the dollars are similar? Well, the NAS is always preferred because you have full control over it, but if you want simplicity, then going with something like that, MyCloud would be just fine for the, for the normal consumer. I mean, you gotta remember, guys. I'm I'm dealing with terabytes of traffic a day. <laughs> right. Uh, someone says, "Eh, Linus, I heard this. AMD does not do desktop CPUs anymore. Thing was related to a fake roadmap. I could be wrong. No, you are wrong. Um, AMD is still doing desktop CPUs. They're not doing AM3 desktop CPUs. Everything will be an APU. I, what I meant was dedicated CPUs. So those are gonna be gone." and it will be all APUs with graphics cores on board. All right, one more question, here we go. Um, uh, yeah, that's not that great of a question, sorry. There's, okay, you can, you, can, uh, you can post on the forum about that, Rob. 
Uh, Brian says, Jay, just saw your video on the CM stacker. Do you think a potentially large case is really that viable of an option? Seems, seem, ah, bleh, with the way that same things seem to be moving towards mini ITX and, and smaller form factors. Well, let me be clear. Um, the stacker in itself, the 935, is not that big of a case. It's just a mid tower. It just becomes gigantic as you start stacking 915s on the bottom or the top. <laughs> yeah, it gets um, kind of ridiculous at that point. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got the top and the bottom, and I stuck it next to the 900D, and it was massive. But I did find that it, it lacked in a little bit on depth, uh, depending on the applications that you're doing, if you're trying to do custom 480s. Um, but, you know, I don't, I, I think there's always going to be those guys who love their ginormous case, like my 900D, and there's going to be those who love, you know, their Node or, or some sort of a shuttle PC. I, I think it's, I, I think both are perfectly well suited towards those who desire that size. <laughs> I don't think I don't see the a paradigm shift towards small PCs, although that may change now with the Steam Box and the Steam OS. But then I don't necessarily think the big ones will disappear. I just think there will be a lot more of smaller ones. Right. All right. Well, I think that's pretty much it for our guest segment. Jay, you were awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show. If you can just give the viewers out there a quick reminder about how they can find you on the interwebs if they enjoyed your segment here, which I'm sure that they did. Although hopefully they'll let us know that they did. Uh, yeah, Linus, Luke, thanks for having me on here. It was okay. a blast. Um, you guys can find me on Jay's Two Cents on YouTube. It's right there on the screen. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter at the same handle. Um, I'm always doing what I can to try and help you guys be smarter buyers and builders of your own PC. Uh, I am a huge advocate of building your own PC, so I'll do everything I can to talk you out of buying a prefab. Uh, but with that, that's, that's who I am. And toss me a follow and ask me your questions. All right, cool. Thanks, man. See you later. All right, thanks. Have a good one. All right, let's move into our sponsor. So Squarespace is our sponsor for the show today. Big thanks to Squarespace for making the WAN show possible. And of course, big thanks to Squarespace for making LinusMediaGroup.com possible. So basically, Squarespace, guys, is the modern GeoCities. It's the easy way to make your own website. If you don't happen to have the same degree of experience with um, coding that you know an actual programmer might have, but you still want a website that doesn't look like junk. I'll show you what ours looks like. So this actually took less time to set up and looks better than the one that we had running WordPress before. And what you can do is you can use anywhere from over 20 templates to make a portfolio or a blog or a store or whatever else you might happen to need. And then if you buy a year of it, then Squarespace will actually throw in a domain with your plan that also includes hosting and it's on a scalable, flexible plan. So if a bunch of people all of a sudden start hitting it all at once. Your website won't go down. It'll just change your rates as things go on. So not only do their sites look great on the desktop, I'm actually using touch navigation right now. You guys can see me touching things here. See? Oh, well, I clicked on things. Anyway, uh, not only do they work well on the desktop or on a notebook, but they're Websites also look great on mobile, whether it's a phone or a tablet. So all you have to do to take advantage of Squarespace is visit squarespace.com slash, well, you don't have to use the slash Linus, actually. You can just go to squarespace.com and use offer code Linus12 to save 10% on your first Squarespace subscription, whether you want to use it for your blog or to sell knickknacks that your aunt made or whatever else the case may be. I'm actually thinking about this. Um... Okay, when we get the Linus Tech Tips store up, which is close, which is actually coming. I was thinking, soon, should we leak a few things? I don't know. Should we? Should we leak things? We'll let you guys tell us if we should leak things. Um, I'm, I'm on the Twitch chat. I'm on the Twitch chat. Okay, anyway, um, when we have the Linus Tech Tips store up, is there any reason? Because my aunt is kind of like an abstract. Okay, hold on, hold on. Have you seen any of her art before you before you make that face? Have you seen any of her art? There will be a classified section, sir, that you will be able to sell your no, own no. products to. I, uh, no, 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 no. Or she can Linus sell Media do it. Group oh would God. buy them from her. No, no hold on a second. <laughs> They're good. They're good. What? Like, why, why are our people going to be interested in abstract art? Why would they not? Abstract art is for everyone. It's abstract. <laughs> okay. Do you guys think... Please answer no. I should allow my aunt's artwork to be for sale in the Linus Tech Tip store. She can put it for sale under her own classified account. Well, the store's not just going to be full of, like, classifieds, though. 
It's, it'll, it'll have a lot of our stuff as well. People are complaining about my headphones. Well, I needed them to hear Jay. I needed both of them. I needed surround sound. That's how it works. So add more speakers. Add more speakers. You'll just, just generate more ears as you put more It's like if only I had a Galaxy Gear, I could add another speaker here. <laughs> oh my goodness. People um, are saying no leaks because clearly the no's have nothing to no do with leaks my ants artwork. Are no abstract art. Now we don't know what the answer is. Oh my goodness. All right, well, I think we can agree that they all probably want the leaks. So why don't we head over to LinusTechTips.com and see if we have anything interesting to show to you guys here. I'm not logged in, but I guess I probably could at the moment, right? Log into what? Log into the forum. Yes, you're on the other line, right? I'm on the, yeah, I'm yeah, not, yeah, 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 don't yeah, worry. yeah. Uh, um, no, IP shows. No, no, because I'm just going to go into the other thing. Sure. Okay, so uh, what is my password? I don't even know. Okay, so here's all the like extra stuff that appears when you're an admin. <laughs> don't pay any attention to those. Yeah, don't look at the man behind the curtain. I love how you're showing the URL, so everyone's just going to go anyways. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Full screen browsing! Yay! <laughs> all right, so this will potentially, at some point in the future, be the store where we'll sell things like review samples or, I don't know, we could sell almost anything here. We have a, a partnership with a, with, a, with a retailer who's... I wonder who. ...local that I used to work for. Um, they're good guys. I love those guys. Can't say that enough. Uh, so we have a partnership with a local retailer where the shipping out will actually be done by someone who knows a thing or two about shipping and packing and all that Not kind of us. stuff. Not us. Um, but the actual transactions will be handled through this. Uh, we're planning to use PayPal as the payment portal. Someone's uh, going to buy that now. Someone probably... Uh, did I mean, you put a stock limit on it? I did. Okay. Someone could actually buy the 3970X for $699.99 if they really wanted to, although I don't think it's that fantastic of a deal. Um, this was just, we were testing it, so if I click on this, I think... Just out of pure curiosity, if someone bought it, we'd kind of have to fulfill that unless we refunded them. So if someone bought this right now, would, would we be fulfilling that? Yep. Yeah, okay. yeah we, have, we, have, we have a few of them, actually. Um, I'm just making sure that So there's, like, know. some specs. I copy-pasted some specs in. <laughs> Nice. So if you were to add to cart I now, think that might have more proper specs on it than this now. Website. Hold on a second. The one pro the problem would be shipping because right now there's no shipping methods that that work. Um, so the way that shipping is going to work is we're either going to get something integrated or we are going to have to just have people manually use like. Canada Post's website to calculate how much the shipping is going to cost us, and then we'll just have to send it out from there. Um, so yeah, that's 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 the thing, and I think payments actually work. So they do. So I wouldn't. So people, guys, people if used you to mess around when there was a widget on there and yeah. pretend to buy it, it's it's gonna work now. So. If you buy this, it will work. It will transfer seven hundred dollars to us, and we will ship you a CPU. <laughs> so if you don't want aforementioned CPU, please don't buy it. <laughs> don't buy the widget. Because you're not getting the money back if it ships. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Hopefully people get that and it's all good. Uh, I think that's pretty much it, though. So, guys, the, the main well, thing... The... We can keep doing leaks if we want to waste time. We can keep doing leaks? I... Well, there's why don't the... we do another leak later? There's this one. We'll just tease the next leak. Yeah. Oh, no, no. We'll leak that one after. Okay. So, let's move on to our next topic here, guys which is that Dell is releasing a console. I, I put this in the doc, and I think Luke, Luke's comment was something along the lines of, how is this even news, Linus? <laughs> because basically, it's a small Alienware desktop. Hooray. I think this underlines a bit of a fundamental issue here with the whole idea of PCs as consoles, whether it's Steam boxes or Windows Media Center, media PCs or whatever else. It's just a PC! It is literally just a computer. I love when you watch the video, the guy's like, yeah, it's pretty much everything's upgradable, including the graphics and the RAM and the storage. And I'm like, of course, it's a computer. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I hate all this Steambox crap. It's literally like, congratulations, you released a computer that looks like a console. I don't care. I just, oh man. I'm curious, did we peek when he was handy clapping? 
I wonder. I'm just curious. I don't know. Twitch chat should probably let me know, but features and design available with Windows 8. Oh my god. Get the Windows 8.1 update for increased productivity with a free update from the Windows Store. Mind-blowing visuals and sound. <sighs> you mean just like we've had on PCs forever? <laughs> virtual design for virtually any space. Whatever virtual design means. <laughs> Expansive experience with Wi-Fi. I lo I lo that's a big part of the movie, too. They're like, you're always connected with 802.11n. And I was like, yeah, not new. We have AC. Like, <laughs> we personally have <laughs> AC now. <laughs> on our... <laughs> I need like Not a beep button so that I can bleep myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we should get one of those. We could do it. We could totally too. do it. We could just. We, we have, have to, to do, do it. <laughs> oh my god, that would be so epic. Okay, yeah, that needs to happen. Anyway, that's not news, Dell. Not news, Dell. That was why we added its news. Speaking of news, this is news. I am so stoked for this. Pebble's official app store coming in early 2014 because there are apps for the Pebble, which is amazing, and I love it, and I use it every day, except when I forget it because I'm a bit of an airhead sometimes. <laughs> I love my Pebble, and having an app store that's built into Android and iOS Pebble apps is going to be amazing because the app store really did revolutionize the way that people shop for software. It really did. What is an app? It's an application. <laughs> I it's, love that. It's not new. It's not different. It's just an application. You just shop for it in an application store. That's all. So the store was really the, the, the shift here. And having something that makes it easy to browse and shop for and try out different Pebble applications is going to be awesome. And I am super stoked. And Pebble is amazing. There's no rumors of like a Pebble 2 or anything, but I gotta wonder like what they have. They've gotta do something, yeah. They've gotta have something going on, which isn't to say that that Pebble 1 is, is bad in any way. I'm extremely nope. happy with it. It's just but things move. Things move, things change, but there's going to be lots of different stuff, whether it's... Uh, so the, the, uh, the categories for apps at the beginning are going to be daily, remotes, games, notifications, tools, ut tools and utilities, sports and fitness, and watch faces. So some of these are a little bit different from what we're used to seeing, but of course it's a smartwatch and it's a, com it's a completely like singular piece of hardware that's going to have its own unique advantages and disadvantages. And the original article is from TechCrunch, and I'm extremely excitemolated about that. Um, oh yeah, do you want to talk about Uncarrier 4? So the original article is from VGR.com. And wow, that is the scariest face. He's always like that. Ever. I love it. I love it. It's awesome. All right, so their CEO has hinted that the company is about to make another big splash in the wireless industry. Another one. This is what, like the third one this year? Uh, this will be the fourth. Fourth this year. All right, carry on. So essentially, it, they, they with their uncarrier thing, it was all really attractive, but a lot of people couldn't move to T-Mobile oh. because they still had there to is. do um, early termination fees, which was a big big deal oh whoops sorry i was distracted i was watching twitch chat no worries um <laughs> yeah that was a really big deal but like now oh, how do i say this they're they're basically giving everyone up to 350 dollars to be like yeah join our side so if you have early termination fees they're just like nah, we'll pay those and they're giving cons extra consideration to families so if you have a family of like four or five people they'll go over and above their previous 350 dollars potential to be like, no, we're going to bow at your whole family. That's amazing. So T-Mobile's like, yeah, Uncarrier, all this stuff is epic. Oh, you couldn't switch to us yet? No, no, that's cool, man. I got you. Just come switch. If I was in the States, I'd probably be all over T-Mobile. Like, the past is delicious. Just come to our side. Yeah. You can just keep eating it all day. Yep. We'll even pay you to come eat it. That's kind of amazing. I mean, honestly, just with the whole roaming thing alone would be enough that I could look at something like, oh, okay, a few hundred dollars for, um, you know, oh, oh, crap, you know, I, uh, you know, I have to pay out my contract. Yeah, that's not the end of the world if I can travel to the U.S. and not have to deal with roaming fees, which are the worst thing ever on the face of the, of the earth. So, 
There you go, guys. It's all rumors right now, the whole $350 buyout of your early contract termination fee, but it fits into the direction that they've been moving. That's just the same kind of crazy thing that they might be willing to do, so we're extremely excited. Um, Star Citizen Hangar Module has an update, but more importantly, the Dogfighter Module has been delayed. Who didn't see this one coming? Yeah. I mean, based on looking at the hangar module, were they anywhere near ready for dogfighting? No. And, like, uh, there's there's some cool stuff, though. They With this update, you know how I was just complaining, I think, yesterday, that they took away my... Oh, crap. Not again. Um, that they took away no, my... <laughs> uh, I'll tell you later. Um, they took away my... Uh, what was I trying to say? They took away my Cutlass. Yeah. And ship. I was uber not stoked. With this update, Cutlass is in. So I'm super stoked to go look at it soon. Yep. Because... But you can just look at it. You can't actually fly it yet. Well, I can get in it and, like, look around at the controls and stuff. All right. So here we go. We can... Uh, I think we might as well just blow through our quickfire topics then and then move on to more leaks, shall we? Sure. All sure. right. So this was a, just a post on the forum that I thought was <laughs> awesome. Samil posts... That this guy ordered 108 R9-290s. This is on BitcoinTalk.org. And um, so to be clear, guys, uh, graphics cards are not really that optimal for Bitcoin mining. They're more for Litecoin mining these days. But check that out. Apparently, this is like just some dude and his dad's helping him finance it. But an R9-290 actually has gone up in price from $400 to $500 since launch. Um, actually, we... Oh, oh, this is an exciting leak. So we're going to have our um, R9-290 versus GTX 780, both of them water-cooled showdown coming very soon, which is much more relevant now than it was when we originally planned it because they're the same price now. Yeah, Because yeah. everyone's buying up AMD cards. So let's, let's sort of average it out, and let's assume he paid $450 each. So 450 times 108 means he spent nearly $500,000 on the graphics cards alone. Never mind the PCs required to power to run them and the power required to power them. So that is bazonkers and it just goes to show you how big into the whole cryptocurrency thing many people are getting. In spite of the fluctuations in value, I mean Bitcoin went from $1200 to what? Five something high. I think high? it was the next day, and then <sighs> and then it halved again. I think yesterday. Did it? I no. Think it, I, I heard rumor that it got halved again. There's a new coin yeah, called Dogecoin. That. Yeah, but that's a joke. Hilarious. <sighs> Hilarious. Uh, we're not talking about that. It's a okay. We'll talk about how it's a joke. Okay, so <laughs> Dogecoin or Dogcoin or whatever you want to call it <laughs> is like it's a joke cryptocurrency that's only reason for existence is to make fun of cryptocurrency. Okay, so no, Bitcoin's at around 600 to 750 right now. Um, so yeah, Dogecoin, please don't invest in Dogecoin. I've heard of people making money on it though, because like people are- well, Of course they're gonna make People money are jumping it. into it as a joke and then like, okay. Don't I hope it becomes like the thing that stays around just because that would be amazing. Like flying spaghetti monsterism? It's like, it only exists to make fun of all the other ones, and yet we keep allowing it to continue to exist. <laughs> because the internet loves satire like nothing else. It really does. It does. Um, yeah, that's about it. We don't really have anything else to say about Dogecoin. Yeah, no, that's about <laughs> so... all that can be said. Minecraft coming to PlayStation 3 on two days ago. So this was obviously a post from earlier in the week. Um, it was really funny. Some of the posts in this thread were kind of brutal. People being like, why do they keep favoring Sony over Microsoft? Well, I don't know, because like you can only release on so many platforms at a time. You just got to kind of like pick one. Or why do they keep favoring Microsoft over Sony? Or I don't know what people were saying, but it's like, I don't know. It was released for one console before and now it's two. And you know, why didn't they release for the PS4? Well, because there's like, you know, what, a million of them out there? Like how many are there? I actually there's don't know. I haven't been keeping track. Relatively, there's not as many as the old. Relative ones. to PlayStation 3? Eh. And it's not like Minecraft needs the extra horses, frankly. Yeah. Although, I mean, there's mods and stuff on the PC version, which is obviously vastly superior, that, uh, that can make it more demanding. That's, that's not a thing on the, uh, on, the, on the other one. Not so much. 
All right, so Oppo is teasing the Find 7, which uh, is, seen this? is a handset with a 2K display. So to be clear, guys, um, that... Uh, Okay, I think the the article here on Phone Arena made a bit of a mistake because 2K is not uh, Find Seven 2K display. That's their graphic. That's, That's their why graphic. they said that. Oh, okay. Well, they're they're being confusing because to be clear, 2K is 2048 by 1080. That's 2K. That's the standard. Uh, two and a half K is 2560 by 1440 also known as 1440p. The problem is that is that the terminologies are changing. So many different ones. We've gone from vertical resolution to horizontal resolution. And the other issue is that there are multiples of some of these resolutions. So for example, 4K could be 4160 by whatever it is. I or 38 or, something. Or 3840 by 2160 or what, like whatever they are. There's actually multiple ones for different aspect ratios. So at any rate, I think what we're talking about here is a 5.7 inch phone with a resolution of 2560 by 1440. Now, one thing I did notice about this particular 5.9 inch phone at 1080p is that it doesn't look as sharp as the one, but that could be the contrast ratio and the quality of the screen as opposed to the actual pixel density yeah, because yeah. Uh, this does not have as good of a screen as the HTC One. It's actually quite warm. Uh, not not like warm to the touch, but yeah, the, the, the how it looks. Yeah, it's more yellow, whereas the one is uh, is more uh, maybe a little bit on the cool side. So it's expected to have a four thousand milliamp hour battery. Man, that makes a big difference. This one's like three thousand something compared to twenty three something. I think on the one, it's the difference between like on a heavy day making it through the day and on a heavy day like being tethered to a charger. And like today I've used it. I've made a bunch of calls. I've been on the internet all day, and I'm at like sixty percent battery. It's like awesome. Yeah. Anyway, um, I think that's pretty much all we have to say about that. Other than that, to me, this really feels quite unnecessary. This might be the world's greatest mouse pad. This was posted on LinusTechTips.com by Wooden Market. Yeah, yeah. A $1 mouse pad that has uh, his or her avatar and Linus Tech Tips on it. Wooden Market is kind of a big deal. Yep, greatest mouse pad ever. Um, also, this was cool. This has happened before, but this is just, I, I thought it was like bazonkers. So doctors in China successfully saved this guy's hand. See, there's a hand attached to a leg. <laughs> I'm sorry for showing you this picture. I probably should have done like a warning or something, but um, they had it, they kept it alive for a month, allowing it to actually like sit and heal. It was uh, from, it was, it was severed by a drilling machine. So the guy, oh, this is crazy. The guy put the hand in a plastic bag without a blood supply while he searched for a hospital that might be willing to save it. So about seven hours after the hospital, can you imagine being like, being this guy and being like, yep, I'm a trek around with my severed <laughs> hand in a bag of ice trying to find someone who's willing to try to reattach it for me. Anyway, he found a doctor that was willing to, 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 to take a crack at it. And 35 days later, they removed the hand from the leg, reattached it to the arm in a nine hour operation, and they will need several more operations and extensive rehabilitation, but doctors are optimistic the limb should function fully in about six months is it, i think i think it's like nerves grow oh man what is it i think nerves grow one inch every month or something Holy so after crap. reattaching a limb like you need times not only for your body to get used to having that again but the nerves to like go back out into your hand i can't remember like that's probably off by a little bit so no scientific data there but yeah six thousand great britain pounds <sighs> Yeah, I think that's all there is to really say, isn't there? <laughs> Probably still scratch your disc. <laughs> so there you go. The price tag for this uh, gaming machine is about ten thousand U.S. dollars. The original article. This was posted by I Mike the King. Oh, I Mike the King. You did not post an original link to an article. I am I for shame. Um, is that weird? unless this is it? Okay. Well, it's from the Huffington Post. Co. Uk. So. I mean, there are other ways to get gold-plated consoles. For example, uh, what's that What's that place called? I, I have it in here. Goldgenie.com. Yeah. Goldgenie.com has all kinds of crazy gold-plated stuff. They don't have Xbox One yet, but no. they have a 360 that's gold-plated for around $1,200 Canadian. So that might you might want to wait for Gold Genie to deliver your ludicrous gaming console. If you're going to be crazy. One thing that we did say that we would call out today is that we have the world's greatest... Live stream socks. So there's mine with Space Invaders. I can actually get mine up there. You're huge. You really are a very large, <laughs> very difficult. large person. Mine has a robot on it. Yeah. 
Slick's robot awesome. socks. So these were a Christmas present from someone on the forum. Oh, we left their names downstairs. I think we left their names downstairs. Frozen Kyogre or something? Which is really embarrassing right about now. I tweeted it, so Instagram, Lannis Tech. Frosty Kyogre. We're, we're terrible people. Ones. It's like we're trying to be thankful to someone, and actually we are just horrible. <laughs> We still have the post-it note downstairs because... Yep, because we didn't want to forget. And then we forgot. And then we forgot. We left it down there. We do that a lot. Yep. We're just generally not very nice people. I think we're kind of nice. We're just terribly forgetful. Yeah, you could make that argument. Which gets interpreted as being not nice. That's true. And are people correct? Is being inconsiderate being not nice? But Is... maybe it's not being inconsiderate. We considered it. By leaving it down there so that we wouldn't forget it. All right, Frosty Kyogre. I can't even really read this. Vodson Frost and Frosty Kyogre. I can't. I can't read it, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, leaks of new forum features. I'm going to sign in because I didn't want to do bad things before. I always want to do bad things, actually. Dun dun dun. I can't even remember my username. It's a good thing I'm not like streaming that. <laughs> I had to type my username in like three times. <laughs> All right, what else do we want to show? Oh, right, uh, full screen browsing. Boop. Ah, this. Yes. So it is so kind of broken and still under construction. It still has many things that has to be done to it. But um, Linus has decided that we need a proper home page. Yes, we do. Which, to be clear, is not us becoming not a community forum. In fact, the homepage will be yet another way to increase our community interaction and our community's interaction with itself and each other. It's realistically a portal for the forum. All of these topics that you see at like Best Frog USA, which is obviously a sample topic, will link to a part of the forum. If you scroll down, there's a trending topics part. We're still working on the logic for that. Still work. That might not work. We're figuring it out. But that is all direct links to the forum. And then if you go down even more, there's a featured videos thing. Um, and then there's feed. And then there's build logs. Build logs will be a direct feed from the build log section. Some people were wondering why the heck there's that sticky, weird, not actually a build log build log from <laughs> Mr. Wizard there. As you can see, it's got a few, few views and a few posts. That's what that is all about because we've been messing Whoop. around with that. So yeah, this is what's been happening lately. So yeah, we are uh, we are we are we are definitely investing. We are spending some money on developing the website and making it a better place for you guys to go and hang out and do things and get the latest news and interact with each other. And uh, hopefully that ends up being something that's useful to y'all. Yeah. I guess that's all there is to really say about it. Pretty so, yeah, much. Uh, the store and that actually, oh, well, we already leaked this before, but we should probably just uh, show it to them. Um, or wait, that's not the right one. Hey, where is that one? What one? The, uh, this oh, one. Oh, media. There we go. Oh, yeah, so there's also another tab here, the media tab, which you can Ooh. watch this show on. Hooray. Dun, dun, dun. So at some point in the future, and you can also see a countdown to when the next broadcast is. Obviously, we're broadcasting now, so yeah. Oh wow! I <laughs> made it. I made it big. Zoom, unzoom. <laughs> oh no! I can't control it. Um. So then there will be like some content here for the channel description and news items. <laughs> so you can see there are definitely some placeholders. There's going to be uh, spots for. Oh, no, I don't want to turn on sticky keys. <laughs> sticky keys on your keyboard? Never a good thing. Um, so over here, there's like the sponsors for the show. And then down here, there's past shows. So we, like I said, we are definitely, we are definitely investing some cash monies in making our website more desirable for you guys to, to check out and enjoy. And, uh, you know, I guess just making it better. Yeah. We want to be better. But we may need your help. We seriously, I know we've been talking about this for like a month, but we will be doing a funding drive for some of the new gear that we really need on these website upgrades that right now I'm paying for. We're trying to, uh, <laughs> we're trying to find a way to make the new one like cool. Really cool. Yeah. The badges thing was pretty cool. Yeah. But we we're going to try to like, make a, a new type of cool. We want different cool stuff. Yeah. So there you go, guys. All right. Well, I think that's pretty much it for the show today. 
Um, Before people freak out, I have build logs. They will be in the after party. They couldn't be in this show because of issues. Really? That's all that's you're going to say? That's all. Because I have a, I actually don't have an explanation. I do. Do you? Yep. But I don't. Nope. Right. I figured you had one, but I don't. <laughs> okay, well, whatever. <laughs> um, so, guys, you can, tune, you can tune into the after party, apparently. Um, I had wanted to stream at 4K today. Theoretically, it's possible. Um, but we weren't able to make that happen. I was having some trouble with the... Uh, with the, oh, I should show you guys. I should show you guys the new setup. Speaking of, of new gear that is going to make... How much of the new setup are you showing? ...our content now? better. Huh? Oh, I'm, no, I'm just showing the, um, the camera. Oh, Brendan, you took the camera. Okay, cool. I wanted to make sure that he wasn't doing, like, other things. Forget it, Ben. The camera's not... The camera's not a thing. I don't have it. Well, I can why show... Don't, the, why don't you have it? I can show the recorder. Well, yeah, you can just grab the Odyssey. Okay. So, so why can't we do it? These buttholes released their product before it like had anywhere any like okay in their defense their website did have like fine print about how it doesn't do any of the things that it's supposed to do yet <laughs> um so this my friends is the odyssey 7q and by sometime in february we will have support for codecs and resolutions that will blow your mind so we'll be able to record in prores at 4k all day with our current setup. So with the battery and the two 512 gig SSD cartridges that pop into the top of this bad boy, see them? We will be able to shoot pretty much everything we do in 4K, which doesn't necessarily mean that much because you don't watch the videos in 4K, but what it does mean is more detail when we zoom in on things. So for something like fast as possible, um, when we punch in on closer on my face, it'll still be crystal clear. What it also means is when we're doing macro footage of products, we can punch in up to four times digital zoom, and it'll still look like full HD 1080p. So the videos are going to look real cool once so this thing Videos works. are going to look really good. So what I was hoping to do, because the way that the SDI out interface works on our camera, is that it only outputs 1080p unless you have a special recorder, which is either this one or Sony's $4,000 one, which is ridiculous. Plus, you need another $4,000 piece. So you need a $4,000 interface piece and a $4,000 recorder piece to record 4K with Sony's solution. So this <laughs> one, right now, only supports 2K RAW. But 4K RAW is coming in January, and then 4K ProRes is coming later. But anyway, it has SDI in. So SDI is kind of like professional HDMI, if I had to kind of explain it. It's totally not the same thing at all. But it's just a digital video signal that uses yeah. a locking BNG connector that is capable of carrying um, similar resolutions to interfaces like HDMI or DisplayPort. So it's a completely different standard. Some people in the chat were saying that YouTube can't support 4K. Yes, it can. And other people are already correcting them. I'm just correcting oh, them here okay. so that everyone yes, it can. it. It's fine. They support it now. Yes. Yes, it can. Anyway, uh, so it has SDI in, so that comes from the camera, and then it has SDI out, which can go to our Blackmagic Extreme 4K capture card. So I thought that I could pass it through, but I couldn't get it to be detected. It could have just been user error. I didn't have long to play around with it. But I thought maybe we could stream at 4K today, but it looks like uh, maybe that's yet another feature that's coming later. Although, being able to shoot in RAW, we have an upcoming project that we shot uh, for Funk entirely in 2K RAW which is basically just 1080p, like it's not higher resolution, but the color and the image quality should be the best we've ever managed to produce. So we're... Do we get to release this one? Well, eventually, yes. <laughs> why you gotta, why you is gotta the hit? other one just never going to exist? Oh, it, it, it will. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, the, the one where he's in an afro and stuff will exist in the future, but the, the one we just filmed for the keyboard will be coming first. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So there's going to be kind of a weird reference in there? No, 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 it'll make sense. We, we, we rejigged okay. the script to make it make sense in the new release order. Okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's, like... that's awesome. And I'm definitely going to meet with Funk at CES this year and see if we can, uh, see if we can find a way to produce more of them, because they really are kind of awesome, although you guys have only seen one of them so far. <laughs> <laughs> there's three. <laughs> there's three. <laughs> but, I mean, what's the point of releasing a marketing video for a product that you Doesn't can't exist. buy? Um, some people brought up that it's kind of funny that Sony took 4K really literally, just made everything 4K. What? This oh, thing, yeah. Oh, this well, thing allows you to film in 4K, costs 4K, you need another thing that costs 4K, and then you can film in 4K. In their defense, the camera itself costs 8K. Yeah. A precursor of things to come. <laughs> no, it only has a 4K sensor in it. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, should we do Sorry. maybe like one Twitter blitz? I was before gonna we go? say before we actually sign off, we should hit a Twitter blitz. People yeah. have been asking for that. Let's do it. Let's do it. Mm, yeah. Mm. 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 You can always go so much deeper than me. <laughs> Wow. Uh, Austin says, you should just open a store called Linus Tech Computing and try and compete with NCIX. Oh. I don't want to. I love NCIX. They're my bros. We'll just work with them. Is it true that the i 343 <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love this show. Uh, almost performs the same as the i 54670 uh, it wouldn't perform that differently unless you're overclocked. Well, yeah, because that's non a non-case. So yeah, it'd be pretty similar. I don't know if there is a 4670. I thought it was the 4570 non k and it was very similar. Anyway, uh, check out Patreon.com. Actually, they reached out to us. Um, it offers a way for your subscribers to become regular financial contributors. We're well aware of Subbable. Actually, Subbable, oh, we were really close to being one of the first like dozen channels on Subbable. Uh, the problem is that we're not U.S. based, and because Amazon Payments, to take payments, requires you to have a U.S. address yeah. and U.S. bank yeah. account, we weren't able to. But I really love what Blog Brothers are doing with Subbable.com. I haven't looked into Patreon.com as much yet, but it looks very similar. Um, we're aware of it, but through the Linus Tech Tips forum and through the store, we will actually have regular contribution options, where instead of you guys giving someone else money to give to us and then have them take a cut, you can just give it straight to us. <laughs> so that'll be a thing more leaks all the leaks um finally some demos and news on mantle oh okay i should probably check that out later yeah it was it was a 46 minute video i think so yeah. i didn't scrub through it for today but i'll show it to you would you prefer mac or windows for a college student i can't choose which you know what post on linustechtips.com and you will get a bunch of people who tell you to choose windows, choose windows. <laughs> um with that said if you legitimately want to be a student and not waste your time playing games Buying a Mac might be a good idea because their limited functionality or you could build, makes them better for certain things. Or you could build, yeah, it's true. Or you could build a Hackintosh. Or you, there's certain, actually, programs that you can get that'll limit you from going to different websites and limit you from opening different programs. Any thoughts on the LG G2? I'll let you field that since we have one and we're working on it. Well, he's working on a review while I work on my one Max review. Um, so far, I actually really like it. There's a few things that I'm on the fence about and there's a few things that I really like. The screen is beautiful. For one, it's absolutely beautiful. The buttons on the back, as some of you can probably, I know it's not. Oh, in, oh, lordy! Wow. Sorry. I know it's not in focus when I do this. But Here, hold the on, silver, hold on. Oh, oh, we have a new lens oh, now too. Epic. Yeah, Is this we, the Tamron? We have like no money left. Because we spent all the money. Because it's the end of the year. There. See the up and down arrows here. Uh. Up arrow, down arrow, silver button in the middle. The up arrow and down arrow are volume. The silver button in the middle is your like uh, power and sleep option and then so it's all in the back which is really weird but then it has functionality where if you double tap the screen every single time i want to show someone it doesn't work yeah you there to we show go. this to me there you if go if i double tap the screen it always works when i do it when i'm not showing people it turns the screen on and if you double tap the screen in a blank area on the desktop it will turn the screen off so you can still kind of ignore the button and then use the phone i'm kind of warming up to it at the beginning i was like wow this is stupid i hate this and then within about a day <laughs> I liked that the volume buttons were back there. I'm still a little bit on the fence about the power button. Um, other than that, it's I haven't played around with it enough. I kind of changed a whole bunch of things so that I'm not using LG's interface too much. Yeah. Um, but I don't necessarily know that LG's interface is that bad. I'm just not used to it. All I'm really used to is raw Android and um, TouchWiz. And it's quite different. Right. So I, I ignored a few things, but I'm slowly allowing options to come back in from LG's side. And a few of them are really interesting. I'm just not super used to it. So right now I like it a lot. It's a good form factor size too, I think. Um, but I do wish it wasn't such crappy plastic on the back. So I might get a case for it. It's very, very plasticky. All right. Next up, we've got... Uh... Someone says, NVIDIA G-Sync, do you think? Yes, at some point, G-Sync technology will come to Rift. Um, yes, it needs it. Uh, John Carmack covered that pretty darn well during the G-Sync event. I asked AT&T if there were any special circumstances where the cancellation fee was waived. She said, death. <laughs> Excellent. 
Wow. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and someone's That's a special circumstance. People I guess. are complaining about Twitch lagging. We did up our bitrate, so you might just have to turn down your usual quality of the stream. Some people have been saying that it might be Twitch as well. That I saw one person was complaining with a 30 megabit per second down connection that he was lagging like crazy. Another person with 30 megabit per second down connection was on source, said it was perfect, no lag, and looked amazing. Um, so, speaking yeah. of which, Mark asks, how's the fiber experience? Yeah, it's awesome. It's uh, pretty great. We speed tested it yesterday, and uh, from 50 down, 10 up advertised, we were getting 63 down, 18 up. <laughs> I'm not going to go there this time. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead, and I think that is pretty much it. So, guys, thank you very much for checking out the live stream, the WAN show, whatever this thing's called. Don't... <laughs> I, I think we changed it at some point. <laughs> and peace out. Well, we gotta do the... Do the what? Oh, yeah. Thanks guys, bye.